We have been writing molecular formulas for a little while now. For example, glucose. We know the formula is C6H12O6. We've used it several times this year, and your biology teachers loved this stuff. That is the molecular formula. It shows you not only what elements are present in the molecule, but exactly how many. We know that a molecule of glucose contains six carbon atoms, 12 hydrogen atoms, and six oxygen atoms. We also know that a mole of glucose contains six moles of carbon, 12 moles of hydrogen, and six moles of oxygen. There is another formula for glucose that we could share. We could share what's called an empirical formula. For glucose, the empirical formula is CH2O. As you can see, the empirical formula doesn't tell us the whole story. It does tell us which elements are present in glucose, but it doesn't tell us all of the atoms that are present. What an empirical formula does show you is it shows you the ratio of the atoms in a molecule. So we know that for every one carbon, there are two hydrogens, and for every one carbon, there is one oxygen. And that's true if we talk about atoms or moles. For every one mole of carbon in glucose, there's two moles of hydrogen, and for every one mole of carbon in glucose, there's one mole of oxygen. So the empirical formula simply gives you the simplest ratio of the elements in your molecule. It does not tell you exactly how many of each element are present. Let me show you how one could calculate an empirical formula. Now I'm gonna give you some data. Cryolite is a mineral. Cryolite is mined and then purified to get elemental aluminum. A sample of cryolite is examined, and there are a number of ways to do this. One way is to put something into what's called a mass spectrometer. Another way is just to do a chemical decomposition. But this particular sample of cryolite is examined and found to contain 7.69 grams of sodium, 3.01 grams of aluminum, and 12.7 grams of fluorine. With this information, we should be able to calculate the empirical formula. Now the data we're given to are in units of grams, so these are masses. If we want to find the empirical formula, we want to find the ratio of atoms in a compound or the ratio of moles in a compound. So masses won't do. Well, this whole chapter is about the mole. So let's get our data into moles and see how that works. I have 7.69 grams of sodium. One mole of sodium has a mass of 22.99 grams. So I have 0 0.334 moles of sodium. I have 3.01 grams of aluminum. The molar mass of aluminum is 26.982 grams. So I have 0.112 moles of aluminum. And I have 12.7 grams of fluorine. Now generally we've been writing fluorine as F2 because it's a diatomic element. But this isn't fluorine in its pure form. This is fluorine combined with sodium and aluminum. So I'm just gonna leave it as F. If I were writing elemental fluorine, as I would with hydrogen or nitrogen or oxygen, I would write it as a diatomic. But this is not its pure form. So the molar mass of fluorine is 18.998 grams. So this means I have 0 0.668 moles of fluorine atoms. All right, so now I know how many moles there are. To find an empirical formula, I want to find the simplest ratio. Well, to find the simplest ratio, we're going to want to put these compounds in the terms of one of these elements. And the simplest way to do this is to put it in terms of the least amount that you have. The least amount of an element I have here is the aluminum. I only have 0.112 moles of aluminum. So I'm going to set that to 1. In other words, I'm going to just divide by 0.112, and that's going to tell me that I have one aluminum present. But if I divide one thing by 0.112, I'm going to divide them all by 0.112. And when you divide 0.334 by 0.112, I get 2.98, and that's really close to 3. So I'm just going to say that that is 3 sodiums. And when I do 0.668 divided by 0.112, I get 5.96. Again, that's really close to 6. So I'm going to say that that is 6 fluorines. You're going to have to do just a little bit of rounding in order to get to whole numbers. But I'm going to caution just a little bit of rounding. 
if you find yourself rounding a great deal, then there's going to be something else we have to do. Well, with what I'm given here, it looks like I have three sodiums, one aluminum, and six fluorines. And that, in fact, is the empirical formula for cryolite. 